ask why guilt is such a common, you know, painful emotion for parents who have lost a child. I mean, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said, guilt is the most painful companion of grief. And it really is. And I think with the death of a child, there's this, and, and to remember anyone that's listening, is that, in, that grief is an emotion. So don't conflate the feeling with the fact. And I think one of the things about grief, about guilt is that people feel guilty and then they jump to the conclusion, I am guilty, I did something wrong. But I think what's particularly complex as a parent is that the kind of definition of being a, a successful parent is having a thriving child. And so when your child has died, whatever the cause of death, there's this inexorable sort of fundamental sense of failure. And it may be that, you know, that it was nothing, they had absolutely no influence over the child's death, that this was a, a kind of a one in a million event that they had no control of, but there's somehow people to go on this um, kind of Sherlock Holmes mission, trying to find a reason. Was it because I ate blue cheese when I was pregnant? Am I being punished for the abortion I had? when I was 17 um, and other kind of concrete things. But it's it, what I talk about with, with people when I see them is to hold their head and their heart side by side. Like you can't argue guilt out of one. You can't just say to somebody, you're not guilty, but to allow them to say and express their guilt because I think that releases some of the guilt by naming it and it being acknowledged, not being kind of shoved back like you're not guilty, but also to cognitively think and say what they also cognitively know and the hold them both side by side, not trying to knock one out with the, with the other, if that makes sense. It does, it does. And I think in grief work, you talk a lot about how sometimes with guilt, you need to go through the guilt in a lot of detail to break it down, to examine it and to hold it up to, to, the, light. to yeah. the story of what's happened. And that to try to get the the kind of heart reaction to then come in line with your head. Yes. But I think there is a sense with these terrible losses that it is our fault somehow, and that somehow we could do something to stop it. And, 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 it, and it could be very rational. If, yeah. Yeah. It's all the, those what ifs are kind of tortuous, kind of rotating disc in your head that you can go mad with and I think I mean sometimes I just use basic things like the it's on my Instagram but a like a television screen where you put the image of the of the difficulty on you take a breath and you switch the channel um, and then you turn your attention away because sometimes the rumination can become embedded in your system and you sometimes have to use a kind of techno tool like like the television screen to switch the channel and the more you do it the more likely it is that you stop yeah yeah i also think rituals really help i think they help with so many things that they because grief is invisible as everybody knows and it feels so kind of limitless i think sometimes by creating a ritual it can be a regular ritual it could be one to represent a feeling that you have, whatever that feeling is, it can be to mark a particular time or date or, you know, but I think they really help give us kind of structure to this fathomless loss that people feel. Mm, that's really good. And I think- I'd love to know what other people think about that, if anybody. Yeah, wants. yeah, no, definitely. And one thing we've talked about also is, is telling the story from a different perspective, just because I think that we hold ourselves we, we feel ourselves to be guilty for things that if the story was someone else's story, you know, we would say, of course, you didn't cause that. Of course, that's not your fault. And somehow shifting the perspective yeah. can sometimes allow us to see, you know, the events more like someone else would see it. Like NLP. I mean, that's and, really nice. And more compassionate. Um, can, I just almost, add one, yeah. I, can I just add one thing is that the people who are watching and listening are really the experts. And, you know, we, we are having these conversations, but only you are an expert on yourselves and know your experience and know what you're having difficulty with. Um, 
but the big thing I think that I would encourage, and this comes with guilt, is the guilt is is to turn to yourself with self compassion. One, I think, one of the most cruel aspects of being a bereaved parent is how people kind of not intentionally, but they can turn against themselves with fury and really attack themselves, and that that can make what's already devastating worse. So to, you know, use Kristen Neff or any of the kind of tools for self-compassion to begin to be self-supportive. And from there, you're much more likely then to get the support that you need. Um, I think people often self-attack because they don't know what else to do with the pain. 